Hey, this is Mayer. Here's my trace for the day. I do want to talk today, traders, about uh, something which is uh, which came out today, which is extremely important. Sometimes come, sometimes we get the opportunity to trade intraday news, and that happened today with ZM. I want to talk about that, but uh, let's uh, have a quick review of my trades today. As you can see, I'm having a, a very red day. I'm down seventy-two dollars, and I do have two winners and two losers. And uh, as you can see, this. Uh, Quantities are rather small for me today too. I played it safe. I didn't see anything, any great opportunities today. But anyway, I'm going to finish in red. One of my losers is ZM. That should have been a winner, but I'm going to talk about it real soon. Before that, let's have a quick look at some of my trades here. First trade I took today was BABA. I shorted it under $226. BABA was a gap and go. It gapped down today. All Chinese stocks were weak today. I, I didn't feel very comfortable about this trade. I took an early partial around 50 cents, a bit less than 50 cents really. And, and I'm glad I moved out because, you know, and I'm glad I took a quick partial because it did not really continue much lower and then popped up and just went sideways. So moved out of uh, the rest of my ba Baba real quick. Um, there's um, another trade I took in Riot. I went long Riot. Riot was really kind of test ground for... I was really watching, I was really watching the uh, crypto and, you know, I was watching uh, the Bitcoin really moving, moving up at that time when I took, uh, when I took Riot. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to work out on the relationship between uh, the crypto and Riot and Mara and see if there's something out there. I do see some kind of uh, interesting uh, resemblance, but I'm not sure about the rest. I'm just trying out, you know, the, the best way to... Uh, to learn something, and I'm still learning new tricks, as you can see here, trying to learn new tricks, is uh, really testing it out. Small size, just uh, trying to feel my way around it to understand if I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing. I'm not sure I am doing the right thing, but unless I put my money on the table, I will never know. You know, it's one thing to trade the demo or to look at the charts, and it's a totally different thing if you put your money on uh, on the stock that you're trading. The only way to learn really is to put your money on the table. There's no other way. Even if it's just, you know, 10 stocks, 100 stocks, whatever. If, you're, if your average size is uh, 400 shares and you just go along 50 shares or whatever, just have the feeling if you're doing something right or wrong. Is The only way to do that is you need to put some money on the table. Otherwise, you just don't learn. There's um, uh, two trades that I'm not proud of. Uh, last one I'm going to talk about is uh, ZM. And the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, Billy. Billy is a losing trade for me. I went short. There was a nice technical formation here for short in Billy, another Chinese company. It looked uh, it looked nice for short right there. It did not do much. And then it spiked up. You know, I never move out on spikes. Well, saying never is probably not true because as you can see, it spiked up and I did move out. I was, I don't know, it was like a reflex. I watched it moving up. I wasn't, I didn't have my profit cushion at that point. I had a small winner in Baba, a small winner in Riot. I didn't really have a profit cushion. So I kind of felt like I need to move out and it was a quick spike. I never move out on spikes. You know, spikes normally are, are just there to take you out of game. And, um, and, and somehow I clicked that button and I moved out and I'm not proud of that. And uh, look at what happened later. It came down, could have been a nice winner. But that spike up over the highs took me out. Beginner's uh, mistake. Another beginner mistake in ZM. But let's not talk about mistake. Let's talk about stock picking. And uh, stock picking in the case of ZM, that's intraday news. That doesn't come along very often. We, we, we are looking for this kind of trade. It's very important to know how to trade them. We had a good opportunity today to learn about ZM and I did not do anything wrong about picking the, the trade. I did something wrong about handling the trade. That's a, a whole different issue. And I have two trades like that, which I am somehow mistakenly traded. But let's start with the with the picking, you know, uh, we saw an intraday news behavior in ZM. ZM was trending low very clearly. Um, I think uh, Yogi shorted it like three times as it went uh, down. He, he, he made some nice trades, but then I think his last trade went uh, wrong. Why? 
Intraday news sometimes happens, very rare, sometimes happens, and then ZM spiked. How do you know that it's intraday news? It's very important to know it's intraday news. Well, the way I know, I asked you. <laughs> and several guys of you came back with an answer. Yes, there was some intraday news in ZM. Something that has to do, I believe, with Microsoft, added them, whatever, I don't care. So the thing is, you can see that ZM spiked up. It could be just fat finger. It could be just a spike like Billy, which will going to be corrected. You don't know. You need to know that it's intraday news. And we looked for it and we found it. So there was intraday news in ZM. You could see the volume. Look at the spike of the volume. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm just going to point my... Uh, my my mark here at uh, uh, the the candle before you can see it was four thousand shares. The one before six thousand shares. The one before that uh, almost two thousand shares. And then comes this upside green candle, huge candle, which is seventy thousand shares. The next one one hundred thousand shares. The next one one hundred and seventy thousand shares. And it stays rather high. It stayed rather high. So after two or three candles, you quite sure that you have an intraday news issue but you need to check it out it depends of course on what is the news sometimes sometimes it depends normally it does not it does not matter much but anyway the only way to trade it is to go with the trend you know when you're looking at a stock like zm when zm is spiking up like crazy that's the spikes you don't want to wait out. You don't want to, if you're short the stock, you don't want to wait for a pullback in ZM if, when it's intraday news. How do you know? You don't really know. It depends on the volume sometimes. If that's like a um, very high volume and it stays like that, you should probably move out. That's the rare occasions when you have a spike up and let's say you're short that you should move out if you are short the stock. And, and, and again, it's extremely hard to know when that happens, but the volume is a very good indication to that. And an extended volume and the volume remains. Well, after the first candle came the second candle and the second candle uh, was still going higher. And if you still short the stock when it spike up, at that point, you should probably move out of the trade. Anyway, the way to trade an intra intraday news is to wait for a pullback. There's no way you can join this trade as it moves higher. There's just absolutely no way you can do that. Yes, it could go higher forever. Forever means another several points higher. Then you just look at it and you're probably going to be very sorry that you heard, that you listened to my advice, but you will be doing the right thing by, by not joining a trade that is just continuing to move higher. We can't. We must have a reversal. Technical trading is all about finding a technical opportunity to move in. The only way you can find a technical opportunity to move in, and that would be the safest way to move in, is to wait for a pullback. There's just no other opportunity rather other than the pullback. I mentioned I, I at that point where it was that high, I looked at the potential of a pullback and I said, well, I needed to come down all the way to 327. Before it came to 327, when it was right here at the highs, I mentioned 327 would look like a good opportunity for me. And it did come down. It touched 327, you can see here. And then started to move higher and then i posted it in the training room for 330 long why i need to make sure it's a technical reversal i need to make sure that it's moving higher and hopefully will continue to move higher the thing with intraday news is that once they had the first pullback that's when you should be in not the second not the third the first one the first one well it didn't quite i, I could say technically it worked because it moved over the highs almost without a serious pullback, definitely did not come under 327 again, and it did spike up very nicely. But usually when you have an intraday news, you expect a quick move over the highs, which we did not get. So at that point, it started becoming extremely dangerous once it was close to the highs and did not move over the highs. Well, it kept to the highs. It came down a little bit and then spiked like crazy over the highs. At that point, it was more than three points over the highs, three and a half points. And that was a foolish mistake of mine not to take the partial. You know, I mentioned earlier, you don't move out on spikes, right? The, the opposite is if you are long a stock and it's spiking up, you definitely take your partials on a spike. You definitely, because, you know, the, the, the thing not moving out on a spike, if you're short, for example, stock is moving up, it's likely to come down after the spike. So we had another big spike up over the highs and 
sorry to say, I felt like an idiot later because it came down exactly like a spike is supposed to behave and I just didn't take my partial. Greedy, I was hoping to get a little bit more. I didn't do it fast enough, whatever. I mean, I done two mistakes like that today. One with Billy moving out, the second one with ZM not taking my partial. So all my fault, all my fault. A good, nice trade could have ended up in green territory, uh, but uh, I just waited too long and it came down and, uh, well, I had a losing trade and uh, just needed to, you know, just close my trade at a loss. It was not a big loss and I did not have large size. It was an extremely dangerous trade. And anyway, that um, I, I moved out. But again, remember the rules of an intraday news game. When you have intraday news, you wait for the second first pullback the first pullback is the one to take you wait you 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 know you play in your head where should the pullback be like how far down should it go for it to become a valid pullback and then my idea was 327 and then it came up over 330 and just imagine in your hand where would be the nice technical opportunity to go long and then you have to wait until it moves over the highs take your partials uh, should have, in this case, I had three point partial. It moved over three point. Three point partial and a three point stop loss, although I stopped it at two points when I noticed that it's coming down gradually. So I, I just needed to move out uh, when it came down. I did not take my partial at the right place, but that does not make it a wrong pick. It was the right pick. I just didn't play it correctly. So remember, intraday news, it, has, it, it works both ways, up and down. The better ones are the ones that are coming down because when stocks are coming down, they're coming down faster than they're moving up because uh, <laughs> fear is much uh, stronger than greed. So we're doing better when stocks are coming down, but intraday news going up, that's of course uh, something that uh, we play quite a lot when it comes. It's quite rare, but uh, quite beneficial. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining. And um, uh, I see you all tomorrow. I'm not having a huge down day, down $72. That's okay. I'll recover. And um, thank you for listening. If you're on YouTube, we would really appreciate if you can give us a thumb up. Uh, we've got a free trading home here for you. And we'd like to see more people joining us. We'd like to see more people coming along. And the only way for us to get it is by you guys giving us a thumb up. Because that, uh, you know, that drives the... Uh, the YouTube uh, engine to, you know, to look for, to shows them that uh, you guys like it. And uh, then more people are seeing your thumbs up and joining us as well. And we would really appreciate if you do that. And there's like 1500 of you guys there. And we would really like to see that happening right now. <laughs> Thank you. I see some uh, thumbs up coming. Really appreciate that. Let's continue that a little bit more. Just one click of a button. And there's also a subscribe button there if you like to click that. And uh, and that's it. Thank you for joining us today. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, traders.